So here we go with what should be mostly a review of the details of particle physics of the standard model. So I've talked a little bit about the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, and the big ring in Geneva, well, on the border between Switzerland and France. Um, inside of that Large Hadron Collider, there are oscillating magnetic fields, and that serves to accelerate charged particles along straight sections of track. In this picture, they look curved, but uh, they are straight. And then bending magnets in between bend the path of the particles into a circle. So all of this depends on charged particles being charged, and only charged particles can be pushed or pulled on by magnetic fields. So these accelerators can only accelerate charged particles. Of course, once you have accelerated particles and mashed them together, you want to detect the fallout. And in order to be detected, a particle must interact in interact with matter in some way. We have um, detectors made out of matter and they won't detect a signal <clears throat> if the particles that we're trying to measure don't interact with the matter inside of the detectors. So some ways that detectors work can be to expose film, to ionize matter, or to fluoresce, to glow. So Wilson cloud chambers, what we're using, contain an area of supersaturated water vapor or ethanol vapor. We'll be using ethanol vapor. That's rubbing alcohol. When the charged particles travel through the chamber to travel through that supersaturated vapor, they leave a trail of ions in their path. And then the vapor condenses into small droplets on the ion, kind of like you know clouds, how clouds are made condensing around ions. It's also kind of similar to what um, happens as airplanes fly through the air and create contrails. So we're not seeing the particles. We're seeing evidence of the path of the particles as they interact with um, matter in the chamber. So the standard model. We have this standard model that's helping us understand and organize the subatomic particles, the elementary particles that we think make up the universe. Physicists have divided elementary particles into three families, quarks, leptons, and force carriers, or field um, bosons. The model of quarks, leptons, and force carriers as the elementary particles is called the standard model. It's not a theory. It does not explain the properties of particles, but it does help us organize them according to their properties. Quarks in this diagram are shown in red, and they are elementary particles that have mass, so they're matter particles, and they can combine and do combine, must combine, into larger particles. One type of particles that quarks can make is protons and neutrons, nucleons. There are six types of quarks and then six types of antiquarks. The leptons in this diagram are shown in yellow, and there are things like electrons, neutrons, no, excuse me, electrons, neutrinos, muons, um, muon neutrinos, and so on. They are also matter particles, but they belong to a different family than quarks. And our big distinguishing factor is that quarks interact with gluons and the strong force, and leptons do not interact with gluons or quarks. There are six flavors of leptons, those being electron, muon, tau, electron, neutrino, muon, neutrino, and tau, neutrino. Each quark and each lepton also has its own antiparticle. So the standard model divides quarks and leptons into three groups called generations. In the um, everyday world, so our world um, or the universe under sort of normal conditions um, is made up from the first generation of particles. That is the up-down quark and the electron. Particles in the middle column or the second generation are found in cosmic rays and are routinely produced in particle accelerators. So higher energy situations in our universe and then particles in the right-hand column, the third generation, are believed to have existed briefly during the earliest moments of the Big Bang, and they can be created in very high energy collisions, such as occur at the LHC. Force or field carriers are shown in blue, and they are particles that transmit forces between objects interacting at a distance, with the exception of the Higgs boson, which is a field carrier that's not about force. Well, except that mass causes gravity. I don't know. Um, in any case, force carriers are also called gauge bosons. Each force carrier corresponds to one of the four fundamental forces. The latest discovered particle